Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar on topography optimization. My name is Arvind Krishnan and I work at Go Engineer as a simulation and 3D printing specialist out of our Dallas office. I did my thesis in optimization for 3D printing, so I'm very excited to bring this webinar and present it to you. Here at Go Engineer, we love to talk about the product development process. We start from a conceptualization phase where you define when you start a new product, uh, where you have a napkin sketch and an initial idea, and then you go on to design it in a tool like SolarWorks. And once you do that, you go on to validate and document your design. Once you validate your design, you go back to the design and make some changes to it. And once you're happy with the design, you're happy with the prototype, uh, you do some prototyping and testing, and then eventually you go ahead and manufacture it. Today, we're gonna to talk about optimization in the design phase itself. Generative design, which is the overarching topic, which talks about this, is the idea of bringing the analysis much further ahead in the design process itself and letting your boundary conditions determine what should be the design of your model itself. We will talk about why this is important in a little bit, but the idea is to use software algorithms to determine the shape of your design itself based on where it's going to use as compared to just doing analysis and as an afterthought after the design has been made. So let's talk about why this is important. I recently read an article in The Economist which spoke about how important weight savings are in different industries. So if you're in the F1 motorsport industry, then each kilogram of weight saved equates to about $120,000 of savings in terms of improved performance. Spacecraft, aerospace, automotive, and defense are other industries where any amount of weight savings that results in exponential returns in the performance and, uh, and other dollar amount savings. If you're in an industry like factory equipment, then you might as well save your costs in the manufacturing processes rather than save the design uh, material cost itself. So, so this chart speaks a lot about where the industry is headed and the amount of weight saved is really useful and it really pays to get maximum savings using a software. So today we're going to talk about Solid Thinking Inspire, a software that has been designed by Altair they have been in the industry for about 30 years, creating mechanical engineering simulation tools. So there are four s tools that are available. The first one is topology optimization, which goes into your design and removes as much material as possible from a design space without removing the the boundary conditions that constrain it or that connect it to the outsides. It takes your load paths and optimizes the material it uses to only those regions. Then you have topography optimization, which we're going to talk about today. In some cases, you still need a watertight, complete model, but you want to optimize the design. So topography optimization is useful in such scenarios where you maximize the stiffness but still keep the weight low. Next you have gauge optimization where you can use a sheet metal component and optimize the uh, dimensions of a thin component. And about two weeks ago Solid Thinking added ladder structure optimization which works in conjunction with topology optimization and results in additional weight savings and um, so ladder structures might be useful in medical devices as well. Think of implants where you have osseo integration and uh, creating ladder structures is going to help improve the or increase the 
uh, surface area for better osseointegration and bone growth into these implants. And it helps in the bone actually accepting the implants a lot faster. So today's topic is topography optimization. We would use this to generate beads and swages in your design. You're using algorithms to optimize the placement of this to maximize the stiffness and you could potentially maximize the resonant frequencies as well through this method. So those in the aerospace fields who have a lot of vibrating components and rotating components in your design. So making sure you account for resonant frequency effects and optimize your design for it is very useful. And topography optimization helps you do that. So you can make sure you don't over-design your model, but make sure you get your frequency limits hit. This optimization tool is for thin geometry only. So you're going to start off with surfaces and your the CAD tools that you use, you're going to export a surface geometry that can be used inside solid thinking. The biggest benefit that I see in using topography optimization is how you optimize your design but still have a watertight model. What does this mean? When you use topography, uh, when you use topology optimization, when you create a design that is low in its weight, uh, it is helpful, but sometimes you don't want gaps in your model. So using topography, you still have a watertight model where you're preventing some of the inner components from the outside atmosphere, but you're still maximizing its stiffness and maximizing the resonant frequency possible. So today we're going to look at an electric car chassis. Thank you to Torque News for this picture. A, the internal car battery chassis of a Tesla car. We're going to analyze it a little bit more. So let's go ahead and look at the design problem first. This is an electric car battery chassis. And the inside of this houses the battery. So we're going to optimize the bead structure on the top and the bottom. The battery weight is 658 pounds and finally uh, so and the material is aluminum and finally the fixtures are around the perimeter so we'll take that into account when we set up the model as well typically when you do a solid thinking model it is recommended to simplify your model so you want to increase your model dimensions as much as possible so that the software can then decide to where to remove material from. So you're going to first simplify it to something a lot simpler uh, where it still has the essential features that connect this part to the other components in your assembly. And once you do this and run the optimization algorithm, you run the boundary conditions and then you get your optimized geometry. Let's go ahead and look at the initial model. Our battery chassis, we're gonna take this model. Thank you to Sorab for providing it. Uh, in, um, and it, this is available in GrabCAD if any of you all are interested as well. And we are gonna go ahead and simplify it to something simpler. Now that we have simplified the model, let's go ahead and jump to solid thinking. We've done a few webinars on topology optimization. This is the first one talking about topography optimization. For those who've seen this tool before, the setup uh, is gonna be relatively simpler. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with specifying the material. These are surfaces and hence right now the mass is zero. So we're gonna go ahead and specify some thickness values, an eighth of an inch, which equates to about zero, uh, 3.175 millimeters. So here we're entering, so we entering it in meters. And we're gonna specify the material as aluminum 2024. And once we do this, uh, it's gonna calculate the weight uh, based on that thickness and the material definition. The two regions that are going to be optimized is the top surface 
and the bottom surface. So I have uh, selected them as my design space. And these are the regions that we're going to apply beads and swages to. Now, keep in mind that those two surfaces were created separate to apply uh, it as our design space. Applying some boundary conditions, we're going to go ahead and select some of the holes around the perimeter and apply some fixtures to them. We're going to do a hinge. Pretty easy to intuitively click on them and apply fixtures. If you've noticed the icons, that's something that's unique to solid, solid thinking. Very unique interface where it's very simple to select it and some of the commonly used options are available right beside your mouse click. Another thing you notice is on the left we have a load case created. It is expected that your model would undergo multiple loading scenarios and uh, the fixtures might be the same but the direction of loading would be different. And in that case you can create multiple load cases and optimize your model for all of them as compared to just one load case. Because in real life, your designs are going to be multi undergoing multiple loading scenarios and you want to make sure that your um, final design can be safe for all of them. So we've gone ahead and select all, we've selected all the fixtures. Next up, we're going to add some loads. So let's select the load arrow. We're going to equally divide the load on both faces. So converting 658 pounds, that equates to about 2,923 newtons in each end. Make sure that the directions are downward. And that sets up our boundary conditions with the material and the thickness. So to talk about the beads, you have a couple of different options. You have linear beads, you have circular beads, and radial beads. And this defines how the beads are spread out. So we're going to select circular for both sides, and that's going to be taken into account when it comes up with the optimized shape. We can also take shape controls into account. You have a couple of options. Single draw is where the entire design uh, space is made from one side. You can think of machining operations like stamping. You also have a split draw where the actual uh, split direction is cutting the model into half. And finally, you have an extrusion process which results in a constant cross-section and no draft. So we can run this model right now where we can run just the FEA and look at the stresses and the frequencies. Uh, but we've seen that before. So right now, we're going to go ahead and look at topography. It gives you a couple of options for the bead selection. So let's talk about that real quick. Uh, decreasing the bead width will end up increasing the solve time. But you have a more detailed solution because of the smaller bead width. And the solver is going to give you a more detailed uh, solution. Symmetry is available uh, and you can use it, but if you do do a frequency analysis, then you're going to lose some modes if you use symmetry. And finally, the availability to take manufacturing constraints into account uh, is huge. You can take existing conventional manufacturing techniques uh, like the stamping and machining that we spoke about, and uh, that's that's huge. So you can you can incorporate that into your optimization process, um, and that helps a lot. Now, three D printing doesn't have as many or similar manufacturing constraints, uh, and is a lot more diverse in its capabilities. Um, so, if you are using a three D printer to make this, then you don't need um, you don't need this, but uh, you do, you can take it into account. So we're going to come back to solid thinking uh, and we're going to maximize the frequencies. We're going to use load case one. 
we're going to maximize the depth uh, which is which should typically be about half the width the width also acts as the mesh element size and it automatically does that behind the scenes Keep in mind that since this is a 2D analysis, we only have a surface and the topography optimization is gonna run relatively faster. So this took about an hour to run and we're gonna quickly go ahead and look at some results. So the first set of results. So here are some linear beads that we saw that have been created and uh, this is how it looks. So here is how it looks in the back as well. And I created that on both sides for the loading conditions that we described. Here is a circular bead. And once again, this is based on the circular bead constraint that we put in for the same load case. And we can see that the, the initial design had a frequency of about 10 hertz. And this one with these beads have gone up to about 21 hertz. for the first uh, lowest frequency. Now, we also went ahead and did another analysis where we took both gauge and topography into account. So just to recap, gauge optimization looks at uh, both thickness and the topography looks at the beads. So the gauge optimizes the thickness. So in this case, uh, we went ahead and ran uh, the frequency after doing a gauge and topography optimization and if you look here we here is the mode shape and the lowest mode um, is at 32 hertz which is a lot higher than the previous case as well which is based on the gauge and the beads that have been created so topography optimization again is a very powerful tool that provides you with all of these options to optimize your designs for thickness and the bead patterns as you want around your design space. Switching back to hit some conclusion points. Once again, you would use this to maximize your stiffness and uh, maximize your resident frequencies as well. The idea is even though you are using a software to run to help you design, you're still using your engineering intuition uh, because some of the results you see, you're making engineering decisions on what manufacturing processes to use, what type of beads you want, and all of these are dependent on your engineering skills um, of what is needed. So while the tool is easy to use and very, very powerful, it is still, um, you still need someone with a good background of the design and that background knowledge to use it. The objective is to optimize your designs and maximize weight savings. We spoke, uh, we spoke earlier about why it's so important for certain industries to decrease the weight of a design and using tools like these really helps you take it up a notch to a different level and get potentially 20-30% of weight savings than uh, just 2 or 3% by optimizing it manually. So that is huge and for some industries it's almost a requirement to use a tool like this. And finally, just to re-emphasize, we are taking existing manufacturing processes into account which is very useful if you don't want to disrupt your existing traditional processes which are very efficient for mass manufacturing as well and um, that's that's great so here are some of the um, so here are some of the citations that we used uh, in this present in this webinar today i'd like to thank you for your time and open the floor up for any questions mm -hmm.